Greetings to all and thank you to Milo for giving me, Dr. Bhavna Barmi, a child and a clinical psychologist, the opportunity of being a life coach here for all my esteemed audience. Let me start today's interaction on quarantine parenting tips with a salute to all parents with us today and especially all my Corona warriors are children. I salute all of you because you are truly dealing with one of the most challenging phases in our lives ever. And I so agree with Milo that this is a difficult time which is adversely affecting our well-being, family dynamics and early learning to top it up. Parents are facing a new kind of stress where your home is a home, home is a workplace, home is a school and home is where entertainment lies. And with the pressure of multitasking and time poverty and staff reduction, it is only making things more and more difficult. Dear audience, I want to start with letting you know that you need to start by being gentle and realistic with yourself and your expectations of managing work and home. You must increase flexibility and reduce perfectionism to develop what we call in times of today a resilient mindset which says that I am doing the best I can with the resources I have. So it's time to slow down and reflect on what works for us and what doesn't work. And this goes for parenting as well. It's time to redesign our parenting to what psychologists call and I especially call conscious parenting. Especially in times of quarantine which makes it less stressful and more productive where you and your child are hand in glove to create a yet another beautiful journey in your life. So today's session is all about exploring our conscious parenting. Let me give you a simple example to understand how conscious parenting works. So let's take the example of a parent speaking to his two or three year old. Scenario one, parent says, what do you think will happen if you keep demanding that I give you this cookie? The child says, I don't know, I think you'll just give it to me. The parent says, no, in fact, if you're rude and pushy, it will make me not want to give it to you. Do you have any ideas what may help you get what you want? Child thinks, thinks and says, maybe I could ask nicely. The parent says, yes, what else? The child says, I could be patient and wait for you to finish what you're doing. Or I could finish my regular work and food and then ask for it. So do you understand the difference? Let's take another scenario. A parent speaking to his eight or nine year old child. Parent, he says, what do you think will happen to your basketball playing if you keep skipping your homework? Teenager, my annoying teachers will talk to the coach who will ground me. You said, you're not going to take me into the team. Could be what the coach might say. So, the parent again says, so do you think that doing your homework will move you closer, to closer or further from your goal of playing basketball next year? Teenager, closer, I guess. So that's it. In the scenarios like these, Parents really want to say something like, ask nicely, or if you don't smarten up, then you will be off that team. But that, remember, is less effective than when a child draws the same conclusion himself or herself and says it out aloud. Remember, our neurons synapse around the words we speak more than what we hear. So encourage speaking out first skill of conscious parenting to have the communication channel completely open transparent and the child having that feel of expression to you as well second important skill that conscious parents use is that of empathy 
empathy statements really get across to kids. Help me understand what you're thinking, what are you feeling? I can see you're really upset. I can appreciate that this is really hard for you. I don't want to break up all the fun. However, this empathetic statement is something that is going to take you a longer way to understanding and helping your parents or you as parents understand your children. In fact, a typical differentiator of a conscious parent is that they support success, which is the third skill. So let's take another example to understand this. Your child doesn't want to practice guitar. I understand that you're getting super frustrated and tired. The parent should empathize. That I do understand that you don't want to practice the guitar. But if you don't get this song right, you won't make it to the recital. That is identifying your child's goal. I know you. And try just one more time and you are going to get it. So that is what you are doing to empathize with the child, to identify their goal and thereafter to support success. The fourth skill is do not power pack your child's schedule. I would suggest that as parents you build some downtime or time where the child does nothing because this is the time which is valued by me and as well by a number of psychologists for the development of parts of the brain that haven't been touched yet. Also include unstructured play as that would definitely lead to creativity as they would have to figure out a way by themselves. Remember it is extremely important for you to encourage unplugging, unplugging from the external world and going inwards. Encourage meditation, encourage mindfulness, encourage prayer. The next important aspect I would like to talk to you about is the importance of the allowance to play. P-L-A-Y. Especially at a young age because this is directly linked to the development of the front part of a kid's brain which is where our highest levels of thinking and fixing are generated. So encourage playtime whether it is structured or unstructured with you or even without you. Again I must tell you that playfulness quotient has a direct correlation with our happiness quotient. Here are a lot of different kinds of plays that I'm going to suggest to you, which definitely as parents you need to encourage. Let's start with playing with some body movements, because by moving our bodies, we are also moving our minds. Psychologists believe that innovation, flexibility, adaptability and resilience have their roots in movement. So thus, Things like jumping, running, throwing, catching are all thinking in motion. So inculcate and in fact do it with them. Even while you engage in household chores, like when you're cooking, you can throw a fruit prior to washing for your kid to catch or even throw a duster that they catch prior to dusting. Just take out five minutes from your work time to enter, to enter their space, to just move with them. And this can also be a worthwhile refresher. There is also object play, where playing with different objects helps the brain develop. The correlation between object manipulations in childhood in higher cognitive skills like problem solving are highly connected. So provide a wider variety of play objects to your children so that they stay occupied, giving you adequate time for your work-life balance as well. Kids also can have pretend play, which is full imaginative play and is highly stimulating to our brain's creative and intuitive parts. It expands your thinking, for example. 
playing with imaginary friends or playing with imaginary spaces like the moon, Disneyland, etc., etc. In fact, social play is kind of essential for the feeling of being accepted and having a feeling of belonging. For example, playing teacher, teacher or doctor, doctor. And to mix it up, you can play restaurant, restaurant in the kitchen, especially in times of today, which could be very innovative and it could practically help the whole family support in presenting the meal. Ritual play are like celebratory, celebratory plays, which teaches us how we keep social patterns in check. Common examples are having a birthday celebration. So if there are special occasions in the family during this lockdown, we must not hesitate to celebrate. Here, we can let our children make the plan and this would also decrease the boredom of social distancing, social isolation that we all are facing. The last one I would suggest is storytelling, which is one of my favorites and one of the most powerful human tools to understand life's lessons and to never forget them. It also helps your child create dreams that later become goals that they want to achieve. So always encourage your child to write down their own stories. Next important skill, very important skill is basically to have a holistic development for your child. Focus on their IQ, which is increasing their awareness on their intelligence sphere. Focus on their EQ, which is their emotional quotient, which again you can segregate into three parts. One is expression of all kinds of emotions. And sometimes understand that it's okay not to be okay but it's not okay not to express. So allow that expression of all emotions. Happy emotions, not so happy emotions. Anxious emotions, strong emotions. Emotional stability is very, very important. Second aspect of EQ is build up their communication skills. Their communication skills with their same peers, with their elders, with their youngers, with authority figures, which brings us to good interpersonal relationships. Good interpersonal relationships is the third important aspect of building up their EQ. So help them, encourage them, even in times of today, enable them to understand the importance of relationships in their life. And you can be the perfect model of shouldering those third important aspect of a child's personality is their spiritual quotient. Now the spiritual quotient is not just about their religious beliefs. It's about the basic faith, the basic morals, the basic philosophies that you want your child to grow up with. So inculcate the values of honesty by being the role model. Trust, first by trusting your children respect it's a very common saying which says the more respect you share the more respect you give the more respect you get back so dear parents three important aspects iq eq sq that is what is going to make the holistic development of your child in fact i must share with you a very prominent research that i was a part of which included more than 250 researchers from 60 different institutions worldwide. It stated that to do well in today's fast-paced, highly social, competitive and globally connected world, our children need four 21st century skills. And these are the magical skills that I'm giving to each one of you today. First is creativity. This has been identified by today's business leaders as the most important competency for the future. Second is critical thinking. It isn't knowing the right answers that counts, but rather knowing how to ask the right questions. 
third is communication. We've discussed this earlier. You can have all the raw intelligence in the world, but if you can't express your thoughts, your feelings effectively, it will not matter. And the fourth important skill is collaboration. Whether it's in the family, the school, or the global community, being able to learn from and inspire others while working in a team is the key in today's work world. And this collaboration can start from your house. This communication starts from your house. So build up creativity, critical thinking, communication and collaboration. And I refer truly to these set of core skills for 21st century success as the holistic quotient that all of us and all of you as parents should focus on. In fact, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, everyone is quarantined at home. Working from home and taking care of children at the same time, I understand, leads to a lot of stress and parenting burnout. Parents are slogging through the day-to-day -day guard duties, maintaining morale, re-questioning supplies, containing fights. Parents are stationed at home. Many are teleworking while being charged with keeping their kids safe, fed, occupied, while pulling extra duty as teachers, recreation therapists, exercise com companions, etc. Having to quarantine is already stressful and parenting 24 by 7 is even more challenging. But remember, children too are impacted by this physical distancing and nationwide school closures. So be empathetic, be empathetic to each other. In fact, it becomes a great responsibility of parents to provide their children full support and good parenting. As in these times, everyone is undergoing a lot of changes. And we as parents especially need to recognize this in our children and provide a good emotional and well, mental well-being to the kids in their developing years. So we can make use of few tips which I'm going to leave for all of you to ease out the stress of parenting and manage things constructively in these tough times. Here are the tips of what each one of you can do. Number one, have some screen-free activities. In fact, there are a lot of things that you can decide to do and many of which we spoke when we were discussing downtime and playtime. Even giving your children small cores and making it into a game or a fun activity that they might enjoy is something that is very, very important. If you can, get out. If no one is showing signs and you do not live in crowded places, it is okay to go outside. If you have a backyard, that is the best place, in fact, for your kids to play. If you do not have a yard or any other outdoor space, but live on a quiet street, go together as a family. Just make sure you keep the right distance, six feet or more, with any other neighbor or person around you. But if you live in a densely populated area where it is impossible to be outside without close contact with others, unfortunately getting out may not be safe in those cases bring in the outside that means you can somewhere maybe keep the curtains open to allow sunlight and natural light you can probably have more plants around and also you can start creating things to create activity that means this is an opportunity for you to engage with your children in different kinds of activities. They could be anything from art projects to household activities, giving them opportunities for learning. Establish routines, but don't fear boredom and do not overplan. In fact, initially, children may need extra guidance as they discover what they are doing 
through this new phase when working from home talk to your children about what is your plan of the day when can you be available and which are the times when you're not available when you will be able to play with them and give them options for screenless activities that they can try while you are working retain your child's daily schedule as best as you can keep their regular waking eating and sleeping hours the same maintain their school work during normal school hours and dedicate a specific room or area of your home to be the school area and keep a regular schedule when it comes to school complete with recess breaks and everything in fact you'll be surprised to know that children and adults alike respond well to consistent boundaries and structure and this also reduces uncertainty for them that will lead to improved behavior but please remember downtime and unstructured playtime is very very important and in that unstructured playtime you can try something new something in addition to the hustle and bustle of everyday life there is plenty of room for new activities or the in-depth exploration of something you're already interested in if your child child enjoys writing this is a good time to try to write a book or a play you can put a step into reading or put it to work maybe you're raising a budding artist you can use this time to write new songs or a visual artist who can make a small art show a creative project is a great way to deliver any stressful energy but i would like to end by saying be empathetic know that it is a challenging time it is a challenging time so be connected with your children grant the gift of time it might actually feel more overwhelming than you expected although this may be the case remind yourself of why you wanted more time with them in the first place talk to them play with them read to them and be present with them as a last part have honest age appropriate conversations about what is happening your children no matter how old they are will no doubt have many questions and perhaps some uncertainty of fears in uncertain times parental reassurance goes a long way this also means being expressive and allowing expression it is a beautiful journey that you and your children can create for themselves and i dr bhavna parmi would truly want each family each parent to express and to go through this journey in the most beautiful manner because the times that you have today are going to shape the times that you will face tomorrow as i end with that important saying what you sow today is what you're going to reap tomorrow and with that i wish each one of you the very best of not just physical health but emotional and mental health with beautiful bonds as a family god bless each one of you signing off